Hello, my name is Reverend Dr. May Elise Cannon. Today is Wednesday, May 8th. Um, I'm currently in Doha, in Qatar. Today is day 215, 215 days. I apologize if yesterday my update wasn't very clear. I was running at the airport. Um, but we have more information now about what happened and about the agreements uh, or the lack of agreements that have been playing out uh, between Israel and Hamas. We know more about what's happening in Rafah, so I wanted to give an update. Um, yesterday, Israel took control essentially of the Rafah uh, crossing um, and Israel has committed to the United States and to Egypt to restrict its operation to only a part of Rafah. Um, which is significant, uh, still very, very concerning. Um, they say that they are aiming only to deny Hamas authority over the border crossing between Egypt and Gaza, and that they're concentrating on the eastern side of the city. According to the Israeli newspaper Haaretz, the Israeli government has agreed not only to limit the Rafah operation, but also to turn over the control of the Rafah border with Egypt to a private U.S. firm. Now, that was reported at like two o'clock in the morning, Israeli time or Jerusalem time. And I've not been able to find out more information about that. I could not find any U.S. sources on it. It was kind of a side note. Um, in the Israeli newspaper, but I wanted to make note. One of the consequences of the Israeli military action yesterday was the cutting off completely of humanitarian aid from Gaza. No trucks in or out, but the U.S. announced that Israel has agreed to open the Karim Shalom crossing for aid today on Wednesday. We'll see if that comes to fruition, but that will be an important factor. Another important piece of news today was that the U.S. was supposed to certify whether or not Israel is in compliance with the Presidential Security Memorandum 20. According to Politico, the Biden administration has indefinitely delayed its report on whether or not Israel has violated humanitarian law in Gaza. The State Department was supposed to issue that report today. If it had concluded that there was a violation, the U.S. would be expected to stop sending military aid communications indicated that the timing was, quote, briefly delayed, according to a White House spokesperson, and that the timing was self-imposed and not required. Um, Hala Rarit, who is a, for, a former career foreign service officer, she worked for the State Department for more than 18 years. Last month, she resigned. She said, we have no ground to stand on anymore. The U.S. efforts to bring the war in Gaza to an end are a failed policy. Um, so that's significant news about the Security Memorandum 20. We've been talking about that as a mechanism by which the U.S. could legitimately withhold arms from Israel. Um, in terms of conditioning assistance to Israel, this week, several things have happened. On Monday night, 185 lawyers, including 27 currently with the Biden administration, sent a letter to the um, top U.S. officials saying that sending weapons to Israel is illegal, um, a copy of that letter went to Politico. There's also growing uh, momentum among Democrats, including Biden's allies, to support conditioning assistance to Israel. 57 Democrats last week urged the Biden administration to withhold certain offensive military aid to deter the invasion of Rafah. And 88 Democrats urged the administration to consider its power to suspend certain transfers of offensive weapons to press Israel to allow more humanitarian aid into Gaza. Now, the U.S. is trying to say the ammunition that they put on hold last week, we talked about that already in the last few days, they're trying to say that that um, hold last week on weapons was to show Israel that they were serious. It's been called a shot across the bow. So as a result of that review, the White House is now saying they've paused a shipment of weapons that was 1,800, 2,000 bombs, and 1,700 500-pound bombs. And they're especially focused on ending the use of 2,000-pound bombs and the impact they would have on dense urban settings in Gaza. They've not made a final determination on how they're going to proceed with that shipment. So that shipment is still on hold. It's a small step in the right direction. So um, Purchase for Middle East Peace has been calling for the withholding of weapons until it can be shown that they can be used, not that we want them used at all. Um, you know, we're a nonviolent organization, but, um, you know, using the mechanism of law that they're in violation of U.S. and international law. Um, 
is uh, the critical mechanism. Uh, Jordanian officials have been in Washington this week, King Abdullah, Foreign Minister Safadi. So they've been meeting with U.S. officials. They've been discussing, discussing Gaza aid, Rafa, other regional issues. Um, they met with Lloyd Austin, King Abdullah, and Secretary Blinken spoke. Um, uh, um, Secretary Blinken spoke with uh, Minister Safadi. According to the State Department, Blinken expressed his continued appreciation for Jordan's leading role in facilitating the delivery of life-saving humanitarian assistance to Palestinians in Gaza and strongly condemned the recent violent attacks on humanitarian aid convoys from Jordan to Gaza by extremists seeking to prevent aid from reaching Palestinian civilians in need. I just want to note that the attacks on the Jordanian convoys were Israeli settler attacks. And um, uh, that's just um, when that's reported in the news, it's not identified who, you know, that those were Israeli attacks um, or at least Israeli extremists. I'm not positive that they were settlers, but they were Israeli extremists. Um, CIA Director Burns is traveling back to Israel today, Wednesday, to meet with Netanyahu as he continues U.S. shuttle diplomacy. And over the last 24 hours, IDF has reported um, sirens in both North and South Israel. Um, so uh, sirens have been going off in the north and in the south near the Gaza border or also near a lot. Hostage and ceasefire negotiations, albeit tenuous, have continued. The Israeli delegation arrived in Cairo to continue talks towards an agreement about a ceasefire. I'd encourage you, there was a New York Times article that explained what happened yesterday. It was widely reported that Hamas accepted the ceasefire negotiations. It was actually an edited acceptance and then Israel did not accept the edits. So they're really, um, it's been quite tenuous. Smotrich called the decision to send the delegation to Cairo a mistake and a trap. Um, Defense Minister Gallant said the operation in Rafah will not stop until Hamas is eliminated or until the first hostage returns to Israel. At any stage where we can reach a plan for the return of our hostages, we will do so. It was also confirmed that Lior Rudef, a 61-year-old from a kibbutz, was actually killed on October 7th. But his body is being held in the Gaza Strip, which means that 38 um, of those 132 hostages uh, are confirmed dead. Uh, there's believed to be 132 hostages in Gaza, Gaza and 38 of those are confirmed to have been uh, killed previously. Hamas officials... Um, Osama Hamdan warned in a press conference in Beirut that if Israel's military aggression continues in Rafah, there will be no ceasefire deal. And in Israel, about 200 protesters marched in Jerusalem and blocked uh, the light uh, rail line and road traffic calling for the release of hostages. Um, calling for the release of hostages. Uh, one person was arrested. I wanted to give an update from Masafar Yata in the South Hebron Hills. This is a note from their village council. Um, we received this from Tamar, our staff in Jerusalem. The Israeli occupation demolished 85, an 85 square meter house of a villager in Masafar Yata. Seven of his family members lived in the house, which is located in Tawana village. Um, they also vandalized spaces, um, the Israeli soldiers, and the head of the household was detained. Nobody knows where he is, but the family is now homeless and has nowhere to go. The village council says that this action is illegal and it violates human rights. And we ask authorities to release him and rebuild his house. Um, also, nine U.S. senators have called on Biden to apply law conditioning military aid equally to Israel. This is what I started to talk about yesterday. It's the application of the Leahy law to Israel. These were the senators led by Senator Peter Welch, um, who urged Blinken and Austin to detail steps taken to address these concerns. The Leahy law should be applied to all security forces that receive U.S. training, equipment, or other assistance. And it should hold all countries to the same standards, and Israel should be no exception. The State Department notified Congress that four of five units it claims had committed gross human rights violations. Um, it, it says that they have remediated such violations, and one unit is still under investigation. 
Uh, Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib called on the ICC to issue arrest warrants for Netanyahu, and she said he should be held accountable for genocide. So that was reported recently. And finally, President Biden reaffirmed his administration's commitment to never again in remembrance of the Holocaust. Um, and he is committed to standing united against anti-Semitism and hatred in all forms. So that is an update uh, for today, Wednesday, May 8th. Um, may we continue to um, call on our members of Congress to stand up against the invasion of Rafah, to call for a comprehensive ceasefire, return of the hostages, release of prisoners who are held um, without due process, uh, and to continue in our efforts towards peace.